tasty ice cream without a freezer. <laughs> How bugs like to travel in the air. And the bouncing ball that always comes back. Something smells good, but how will Lucas find his lunch? Are you a super taster? Here's one way to find out. And John renovates his room. All he has to do is choose a colour. Welcome, Welcome to, to Backyard, Backyard Science. Science. The show that finds the smart way to do just about anything. But first, Lucas has a problem and it all starts with his nose. Food. I smell food. Oh, it smells good. Someone's cooked up a treat. But where's it coming from? I reckon I could smell food half a mile away. It's still out there. Somewhere. Not under here. A hungry boy never gives up. Nothing. It must be over here. There's food somewhere out there. I know it. But I just can't see it. What this starving boy needs is a telescope. These lenses will do the trick. Ah, cardboard. Perfect. And some scissors and tape. Now, where was I? These magnifying glasses should make things look bigger. That's because the glass is thicker in the middle. Whoa, it makes things look upside down. I've got to figure out the best length to make my telescope. So I need to get the best image from these two lenses. Put one of the lenses close to your eye. And the other one, you move away from the eye. Like this. That's it. The perfect distance. Cut the card to that length. Roll it up. Stick it together. And then fit in the two lenses. Not bad. A quick and easy homemade telescope. Now I'll be able to spot where that delicious food smell is coming from. It's got to be out there somewhere. Lucas's telescope is just a small one, but take a look at these. This one's so big, it's got its own door. Big telescopes use huge lenses. They also capture images not just of light, but faint electrical signals from way off in the universe. They're so powerful that they can capture really clear images of what other stars and galaxies look like. We've got a stack of potatoes to peel. My sister's not too impressed. Maybe juggling will impress her. Oh, maybe not. Hey, the forks! Watch this. If you make a slit in the side of the potato, stick a fork into it. Keep doing this until you get a whole chain of potatoes, all held together by forks. Looks weird, but it gets weirder. Carefully hang the potatoes over the edge of a table. Notice something? They're balancing. What's going on? What happened to gravity? You'd think the center of gravity, the point on which the potatoes balance, should be there. But it can't be. The center of gravity of our potatoes is there. So what happens if I add more weight to our balancing potatoes? Look out. I think I just lost the center of gravity. Margo hates drinking milk, but I'm going to show why Mum nags us to drink it, even if some of us don't like it. Take some leftover pieces of roast chicken, grab some of the bones and wash them. Then dry them. This is tougher than I thought. Now for the next step, I'm going to tip some vinegar into a jar and pop in some of the bones. When we come back a few days later, look at what's happened to the bones. They were all soft and bendy. Like our bones, chicken bones have a mineral called calcium in them to make them hard. Vinegar is an acid strong enough to dissolve the calcium in the bone. 
Without calcium, there's nothing to keep the bone hard. So my mum is right. You need calcium to keep your bones and teeth strong. And milk is full of calcium, so we better drink up. Thanks, Sophie. I think I see what you're getting at. Let's see if Lucas is putting his telescope to better use. It's amazing what two magnifying glasses, some sticky tape and a bit of coloured cardboard can end up looking like. This homemade telescope should be the answer to my lack of lunch. With a view like this, surely that smell is no longer safe from my hungry clutches. Aha! Sophie and Margot. But what are they eating? This is driving me mad. I need to get closer. Oh, but I can't see over the fence. But I know something that can look over fences. What I need is a periscope. I'll need a milk carton and a couple of mirrors. I'll cut a hole at the top on one side of the carton. And a small hole to look through on the other side of the bottom. Now, make some slits at the side and slide in the mirrors. Make sure the shiny sides face each other. Now to put it to the test. Light is bounced from the top mirror to the bottom one and into my eyes. It's like being a foot taller. Soon that food will be mine. Periscopes have been used on submarines for more than a hundred years. Today there are even periscopes on remote controlled spy submarines. With no one on board to look through the periscope, the images are sent to a camera and recorded or sent back to dry land. I know we taste food with our taste buds, but what are they? I've promised Ben a reward if he helps me out. A little food colouring on his tongue shows the little bumps where the taste buds live. We actually have about 10,000 taste buds. Each bud has about 100 taste receptor cells inside. Now I've heard we taste different things in different parts of our tongue. Now this is salty water. Tell me where you taste it. Uh-uh. So he seems to taste salt most strongly here and here, at the front of his tongue. Now what about some lemon juice? Uh -huh. uh. Yep, that was a sour one. Uh. He tasted that at the sides of his tongue, towards the back. Let's try tonic water. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh. Mm, right at the back for bitter. Now what about sweet? This is sugar and water. He can taste that right on the front tip of his tongue. The middle of your tongue doesn't have many taste buds at all. But by sensing salt, sweet and sour and bitter, we can taste thousands of flavours. OK, you're done. Here's your payment. Now this is what tongues are for. Looks like Ben and Angelique have got that one licked, Dana. Yes, Jason, they seem pretty happy with themselves, but I think John needs a little cheering up. I'm over my bedroom. I'm sick of plain old green. I need a change, but I don't know which colour to choose. 
To help me decide, I'm going to make my own colour panel. Now when I overlap these two plastic sheets, I get another colour. With this red sheet, the same thing happens. Now what's amazing is that with just these three colours, red, blue and yellow, I can make just about any colour I like. To make a colour panel, measure some strips on your plastic sheet and cut them up. You'll need blue, yellow and red, which are known as the primary colours. Stick these to a piece of white card, one after the other. When you mix primary colours, you get secondary colours. So if I lay a yellow sheet of plastic over the blue, I'll get green. See? Now as I complete my colour panel, the layers of plastic are producing all sorts of weird and wonderful colours. By adding more layers on top, the number of colours keeps on rising. It's just mind-boggling how many there are. So now I should be able to choose. I can't decide. But maybe I don't have to. Yes, I like it. I'll never get sick of these colours. Looks like John needs to be a little more decisive to me. But I know someone who knows exactly what he wants. Food. If this can't help me find my lunch, I'll starve. There they are. Oh, look at that pasta. And there's still some left. Hey girls, let me have some. Please. Oh, go on. I'm wasting away over here. I haven't eaten for hours. What's he doing? It's a periscope. I guess he deserves some food for all that effort. Ah, oh, they can have it. There's nothing more important than food. I don't know what those girls are laughing about. But I hope they stand there until I finish their ice cream. It tastes delicious. It was so good of them to leave it for me. Uh-oh, here's trouble. How can I get out of this one? How about I show you how to make your own ice cream? Then you'll never run out. Wrapping presents again. It's no fun when they're not for me. I need a lift. Whoa, that works. How about the paper? That gives me an idea. I'll need some tissue paper, some scissors, a scarf and a metal tray. Now if I cut out some little figures from tissue paper, put them on the metal plate, then rub the balloon with the scarf, watch what happens to my little people. They're dancing! <laughs> the balloon becomes electrically charged when it's rubbed with a woolen scarf. It attracts the dancers and also charges them. After a while, they fall down. Then they're attracted all over again. As long as I keep rubbing, they'll keep dancing. It's cheaper than batteries. Liam and I are competing to see who can make the best mummy. Oh. Round 
one definitely goes to Liam, but I've got a feeling I'm going to win round two. I'm going to need a baking tray, a scaled and gutted fish, and lots of Epsom salt. The salt will suck all the moisture out of the fish. I have to make sure it's completely covered. In a couple of weeks, that fish there is going to be as stiff as an old Egyptian pharaoh. Ancient Egyptians had mummy making down to a fine art. They even made mummies of their pets. Before the bodies were wrapped from top to toe in strips of linen, body parts were packed and covered in salt. The salt kept the body tissues dry and helped preserve the mummies for thousands of years. Okay, it's been two weeks. Let's see how my fish is doing. It's pretty solid. Yep, it's well and truly mummified. The Epsom salts have drawn moisture from the outside and the inside of the fish. And it doesn't even smell. Hmm, I wonder what that Liam's up to. <laughs> What's the matter? Afraid of a little mummy, are we? <laughs> I'm going to try that at home, Dinah. You want to help me? <laughs> no thanks, Jason. I think making ice cream is more my style. Let's see how Ben's doing. Okay, girls. To make ice cream, you'll need cream, milk, drinking chocolate and sugar, a bowl, some spoons, and whatever yummy stuff you want to put into it. Perfect. Now, mix together two spoons of drinking chocolate powder, one spoon of sugar, four spoons of milk, and two spoons of cream. And stir. Don't forget to put in all those yummy extra bits. Now, the trick is to turn that goo into ice cream. And we're going to do it the old-fashioned way, before refrigerators were born. We need a bowl of ice and lots of it. And salt. The salt will help make the ice cream set. Seems odd, but it works. We'll see why later. Put the ice cream mixture in the bowl on top of the salted ice cubes. Put a towel over the bowl. Now you need to stir it every few minutes. But mostly, you wait. These two are feeling really rotten. <coughs> Joseph was sick first, and then John got sick. It always seems to happen that way. One person gets a bug, then it travels to someone else. How did it get there? Yuck! A rotten apple. Maybe the sick apple could infect another. If I take some of the bugs from here and put them into a healthy apple, we'll see if it gets sick. Give it a few jabs. Let's see what's happened. The sick apple is still sick. And look at the other one. It's starting to go bad too right where I gave it the bug injections. The disease has travelled. It's the same with people. Germs can spread through touching hands or sharing cups with a sick person, but they also spread through the air when a person sneezes. Yuck! And with all those bugs around here, looks like Al needs some looking after now. Losing a 
again. Shamini always beats me. It can't be my fault. I blame the ball. The ball never bounces up in the same position. It always spins a little after it's hit the ground. I think it's because the basketball grips the ground when it hits. See, it has a sticky, rubbery surface. Basketball's not really my sort of game. But I'm never going to win at anything unless I can figure out about the bounce of the ball. Let's have a try. I'll use these bricks and some perspex to make a bouncing test tunnel. My first guinea pig, a tennis ball. If I throw the ball through the tunnel, I'll see if it grips and spins. Nope, tennis ball goes through pretty easily. The furry surface of the ball doesn't have much grip. It skids off the perspex rather than spinning. And now for my next test, the bouncing Super Bowl. It's got a surface a bit more like my basketball. Now that's different, it comes back to me. No matter how hard I try, I can't bounce it through the tunnel. It must be because of the surface of the bouncing rubber ball. It looks smooth, but it feels sticky. So when it bounces on the perspex, it grips and spins back. Okay, now I'll be a master of ball control. Danielle in a ridiculous white coat and big glasses and boring lectures about things that no one's interested in. Each water molecule contains two hydrogen and one oxygen atom and there's an empty space between each water molecule. For goodness sake, all she means is that water has holes in it. We've got a glass filled with hot water right to the top. Who thinks it's going to overflow if I tip anything else in? I'll buy an ice cream for everyone if I make a mess. This calls for a steady hand. There, a whole teaspoon of sugar. You'd think the water would overflow, but the sugar has dissolved into the invisible holes in the water, so it takes up less space. My piggy bank is saved. No ice creams. That's it. Back to you, Professor. Let's get out of here while we can. That's amazing. So when a cup's full, it's not really full, is it? That's right. But when an ice cream tub's empty, it really is empty. Let's see if Ben can fill it up again. We have to keep stirring the ice cream every few minutes. That keeps the ice crystal small and makes it creamy. Yum! The girls have been waiting for ages. It's very nearly crunch time. Okay, girls, what have we got? Ice cream! This is how they used to make ice cream freeze in the good old days. By itself, ice melts at zero degrees C. But add salt and the temperature goes much lower. That makes the temperature of the cream drop too. So it becomes frozen ice cream. The towel stops warm air from flowing into the chilled bowl. Not bad, huh? Your own freezer. And one more interesting fact about this ice cream. If you ate it now, you'd both be infected with boys' germs. Thanks for the ice cream, lady. Good thing you know how to make your own now. Ah, oh, Ben, I'm not sure that was such a smart move. Let's hope he's a fast runner. See you next time on Backyard Science.